Hello and welcome to another video having a look at the Prima Luigi Lab Sesto Senso motor focuser um, with a nice touch of a built-in controller. Now when you get the unit it comes with a little bag of goodies, uh, one of these being a USB stick with the standalone software um, and 32 and 64 bit ASCOM drivers and such like. And you also get a bag of little couplers, various sizes, got different holes in the ends to accommodate different focusers. And uh, each one has two Allen screws to look, to put little grub screws in to tighten them up. Um, all made of anodized aluminium. And on this particular Takahashi, you use the green one. So normally the focus motor goes on the high speed shaft side and fixes through the two bolts that hold the focuser on. But the Sesto Senso fits on the micro focuser side and then clamps around the collar. Um, this fits on most standard focuses. There are two different sizes, a different adapter that you can get as well. And uh, it just secures with a, a 3mm Allen key that clamps the main clamp around the, the little collar. And then three little 1.5mm grub screws, um, two, one in each side and then one in the bottom, uh, just to secure it. And once they're all done up, it is actually really quite nice and secure. So um, my worries initially were that with the cabling at the bottom or the top, whichever way around you put it, it, it was going to have a tendency to spin, but it actually doesn't. It's very good. So what we'll do is we'll switch it on and we'll have a little look at the software, which just installs from the USB stick, uh, like any other Windows application. I'm running the Eagle 2, which is just a Windows 10 machine. Um, but when you load the software, you open it up like you would any other Windows program and it uh, opens up a little control center which expands for advanced settings and then once you select the correct COM port that you're connected to hit connect you then um, connect to the unit and show the the firmware version that you're using and the serial number of the unit it picks up the number of counts that it's already uh, parked at and then once you expand to the advanced settings you've got uh, some presets for the speed and torque settings you can adjust the speed and torque settings individually um, and you can um, send and read and uh, readings from the unit and then set the defaults back to where they were from the factory so the first thing we need to do is to hit the calibrate button uh, to tell the unit how long the focus travel is and then we select the relevant type of focus that we got in this case the Crayford style so it's an R&P focuser um, we click next and then we need to drive the focus tube all the way to the closed position or just short of closed don't bottom it out because that can cause damage so just short of the fully closed position um, and then click next and then we need to drive it all the way to the out position now you need to have measured this previously because you need to stop just shy of your fully open position because again you don't want to hit it onto the stops. Now my Takahashi is 30mm, I've got a little mark on my top rail so I'll stop it just short of the fully open position. And then once you've got to the fully open position you click next but you can adjust it slightly in slightly out with the plus and minus buttons. Uh, so once you click next that's it, your calibration is done and it's always a good idea just to click save parameters just so that uh, nothing gets lost. And then you can use the go-to's to drive it open and close. You can stop it midway, uh, just change the go-to position, and again drive it to whichever position you want. Just click go-to and away you go. Uh, in addition to that, you've obviously got the micro-step buttons as well. Uh, so you can use the single arrow and drive it however many steps you have uh, you've set in the window. And the double arrow actually drives it 10 times the single arrow amount. So for a, a step size of 20, the double arrow will drive it 200 steps uh, in either direction. So that's quite handy for fine focusing if you're just doing a, a manual and not an auto focus routine. And you also have the option to reverse the driver as well if your motor's going back to front. Uh, you've got various presets for the uh, the speed and the torque of the motor. Uh, you can go medium and you see the settings change. You can go light and you see the settings change. And uh, again, you can go heavy. I've got mine set on the heavy settings uh, because it's quite a large slow focuser. So it just um, runs it quite slowly. It runs it on, uh, on a higher power. So once you set the go-to's, you see it opening and closing. The, the sound's quite nice, actually. It's not, not too noisy. It's not... Um, it's not obtrusively noisy, it's quite nice. And any point in the travel, you can just stop it. 
you can drive it all the way closed and it's very very accurate i've measured it with the uh, vernier gauges and it's it just seems to go to exactly the same place each time now whether that's going to change over time with a ball bearing reduction system i'm not sure i suspect so but then um, it's not an issue to just recalibrate again from time to time but that would be the same with any focuser driving on the micro focus shaft so we'll have a look in sequence generator pro um, at the ascom drivers it will they'll come with the unit so you see in my default profile i've got the sesto senso ascom driver installed everything works absolutely fine it connects it pulls all the the um, the readings from the unit um, i've got the focuser backlash set in this uh, particular program that works absolutely fine all the go-to's work well so there's no issues at all running this um, with sequence generator pro using the ascom driver that i can see so I hope this has been a useful video. Um, as soon as I've got the unit out and running under the stars and using it in anger, I'll obviously post an updated video with the performance and try and give updates as I go along with it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.